Okay, well, it's 930, so we're going to hope, go ahead and get started. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dana Keim. I am the um, Director of Family Services at the Stevenson County Health Department and the coordinator for the All Our Kids Network in Stevenson County, um, where I've been here for 21 years. Um, and I will just start this session off by saying that I am not an expert in the four agreements and I am not an expert in the turnaround but I have found it very, very freeing. Um, so I just thought I would offer some of this information and share with you guys. Um, I will have a little bit of interaction. So if you want to share your video, you can. I, you don't certainly don't have to, um, <clears throat> but stop me at any time if you have any questions. I tend to talk really fast and I've had four cups of coffee. So that might exasperate that. I did not follow the instructions very well at the very first session <laughs> regarding getting a healthy start to my day. I sucked down a lot of coffee. Anyway, thank you guys all for coming. Um, how many of you, you can either turn your video on and raise your hand or you can use your little hand signal. How many of you have ever had a problem or stress or something that depressed you? in some way that you got depressed. Yeah, yeah. How about um, a thought in your head that may have help, that may hold you hostage? Any thought at all? Yeah, something that gets stuck in there that you just can't get out. Um, what, kind of, what kind of issues cause you these kinds of pain? And you can feel free to pop them in the chat box if, you're, if you want to share. Um, so what kind of issues cause you mental pain? For me, one of the things is, you know, when I think people are talking about me. Or... If there's a part of your body that hurts. Sure. And that goes, you know, when you have a, a chronic pain somewhere throughout your body, that that plays a big role mentally. Yep, you're right. Uh, yep. Your lifestyle like that. Sure. Yeah. Yep, writing a grant. Perfect, Rebecca. I am right there with you right now. Um, thoughts that lead to anxiety, but not depression. Sure. Absolutely. Still causes you pain, even though you might not be diagnosed as having depression, but you still have thoughts of anxiety. Family changes. Sure. Yeah. Every, anything possible could cause us pain or stress, right? So one of the handouts that I sent you guys um, is from a woman named Byron Katie, and she developed this process called the work. Um, she was, became severely depressed when she was in her thirties, so much so that, um, she was homebound for two years and she had many, many suicidal thoughts. Um, she, when she believed this came to her because she, she believed that something should be, should be, should be different than what it is. And she suffered because she thought things should be different when she didn't believe those thoughts that things should be different, then she was at peace. And so she created this simple method of inquiry that's called the work to help her turn those thoughts around. And so we're gonna go through some of those, um, some of this practice today. Um, the, by doing the work, it leads people to question our own painful thoughts. So any thoughts that you, know, that, that you might have around writing a grant or something that may have happened to you or family changes, things like that. And it helps find resolutions to our own problems. So we have the ability to solve our problems ourselves. Sometimes we just get stuck and can't get there. Um, we become disturbed by what happens to us, not by what happens to us, but the thoughts about what happened to us. So for me, if I've had a traumatic experience in my life, the thing that holds me hostage are the thoughts that I have around that traumatic experience that continue to be stuck in my mind. And no matter what that feeling is, there is a specific thought that causes a reaction, right? So something happened to me, um, the thought that I'm either not good enough or um, I could have done something better or someone doesn't like me, that causes a reaction in my body, physically, mentally, whatever it is. If we didn't believe those thoughts or if we had a way to get around those thoughts, we wouldn't have those reactions and we, we would have less stress, anxiety, and depression in our lives. So this practice, what it does is it helps us notice when our thoughts argue with reality. So what really is happening? Um, it helps us stay in our own business. And what I love about her book, um, she talks about three types of business. She talks about mine. So obviously what, what is my business? 
what is your business and what is out of our control. So she calls it God's business. Um, you could call it whatever you want, but things like the pandemic out of our control. So she would call something like that God's business. So if we stay in our own business and not in someone else's business, or if we work on what we can control, um, our thoughts will not be as painful to us. The other thing that she talks about is becoming aware of our stories. So the sequence of thoughts that we come up with in our mind, right? Like I could create a whole story around one traumatic event that happened to me, no matter what that traumatic event is, that causes me so much pain. And I've created a whole story, maybe not even knowing the circumstances or how I could change that, how I could change that. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the thoughts behind our suffering um, and behind every uncomfortable feeling. So we're going to work through that here in a little bit. Um, one of the things that we use at the health department, I'm going to share my screen here, is something called the four agreements. And some of you may have seen this before, but what I love about this is it is applicable in just about every single situation in our lives, right? So I have this posted up on my wall in my office or on my, on my desk in my office. The first of the agreements is to be impeccable with your word. So speak with integrity, say only what you mean. Don't, don't put words behind what you mean. Avoid using words to speak out against yourself or to gossip about others and use the power of that word in the direction of truth and love. So even just following that one agreement, you can see how things could change around you if you, if you just use that one agreement alone. The one that I have the hardest time with myself is don't take things personally, right? Because if someone says something, if they're having a bad day, um, if something, you know, they say something, I could take it the wrong way, but it might not, it's, it might not even be about me, right? It might be something that happened at work or at home and they just happen to explode and I am the bearer of that explosion not to take that personally. Or something that I hear our home visitors um, struggle with is when they might have a family who turns them down for services or who doesn't show up for services. So we have to talk to them about not taking that personally. Um, nothing that others do is simply because of us, right? What others do and say is a projection of their reality. So what's happening in their lives. And we be, when we make ourselves immune to the opinions and actions of others, we then don't be, aren't the victim of needless suffering. So just reviewing that to myself on a regular basis is very, very helpful. Another one is don't make assumptions. This is something that I really had to work on hard. Um, I, I feel like I've made a lot of strides in the last couple of years. Find the courage to ask questions. So one of the questions I ask all the time is, tell me a little bit more. Like, what's, what's behind what you're thinking or what you're doing? Let's dig a little bit deeper. Um, Communicating with others as clearly as we can helps to avoid misunderstandings, sadness, and most of all, drama. So just with this one agreement, it can completely transform our lives if we don't make assumptions about what others are thinking or why, other, why people are doing certain things. It just is so freeing. Always do your best. It's going to change from moment to moment, right? Like today, my best might be I showed up to work following dress code. Tomorrow, my best might be I knocked out 55 things on my to-do list, but today I'm going to challenge myself to do my best and know that my best is all I can give on that day. Um, it'll be a different when we're obviously when we're healthy opposed to when we're sick. And under any circumstance, if we try and do our best, we're going to avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. So I, I also struggle with this because I have a very, very large to-do list and trying to get everything accomplished every day. Um, if, if I was holding myself to that standard of completing my to-do list every day, I would be unsuccessful and I would have complete and total regret. So um, at the end of the day, if I can look back and say, yep, I really feel like I did my best today. There's not one thing I could have done better um, than I avoid that self-judgment and that self-abuse. There, um, Don Miguel Ruiz has actually a couple of different books. He has the Four Agreements book, and he has another one called The Fifth Agreement. I do have extra copies of these. If anybody would like one, I would certainly be willing to share them with you. Um, so just let me know, and I can pop one in the mail to you. He has a lot of information online as well, so you can do, his, um, do some research of your own. 
So before we move into the turnaround, does anybody have any questions about the four agreements? Have any of you used them um, in, a, in a situation that you'd be willing to share? Good morning. Hi. I'll go ahead and share my, um, I use this, I work with the community. So I have a lot of clients in the community and I really go by this. So I try not to take things personally. I don't make assumptions. Um, I too have this in my office <laughs> and I also have the books that I love. So Wonderful. I do use this. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, does anybody else have any, any um, experience with the four agreements that you'd like to share? Okay, well, we are going to switch over to um, what Byron Katie calls the turnaround. Um, let me switch my screen here. Ready to go, of course, now I can't find it. Here it is. Okay. So <clears throat> the premise behind this is that we are going to turn around a statement that we have stuck on our head, okay? So um, think to yourself, something, some thought that is holding you hostage. Um, it could be um, anything from, you know, I, I'm too fat to, or um, I, you know, i Something, something that holds, I'm not good enough, um, some thought that you have. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, challenge that. So is that statement actually true? What is the, what is the reality of that? Whether you like it or not, what's in front of you? So, and shoulds or shouldn'ts aren't reality. So I could say my husband should do the laundry but is that reality? He doesn't do the laundry. Reality is that he doesn't do the laundry, not that he should do the laundry. But if I hold that thought in my head, then I think other, I'm, I'm holding other people responsible for something that's in my head and it, that's on them. So, oh, here's something. So think of a thought in your head. Now, can you absolutely know that's true? Yes or no? There's, and again, there's no what should be, there is only what is. So when you think about that thought, how do you react? What happens when you believe that thought? What kinds of emotions arise? What images of past and future do you see when you believe that thought? How do you treat yourself and others when you believe that thought? So just take a few minutes and think about that. We're actually going to go through this one. And then um, the next step is then who would you be without that in that situation, without that thought? So if I didn't have the thought in my head that um, I have the worst hair in the world, who would I be without that thought? And then we're going to do what's called the turnaround. So then you take that thought and you turn it around. You just make it the opposite of what it is. So um, if, for instance, I have the worst hair in the world, I would say I have the best hair in the world. Contemplate how each of those turnarounds are truer, truer than what you said. So would anyone be willing to go through this exercise um, with a thought that you have? <laughs> We can see it in action. Anybody want to volunteer? Kim, are you raising your hand because you're volunteering? I didn't think I was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, wrong Kim. Kim Williams. I have a hand up in Kim Williams. Okay. 
I don't know if that was from this from earlier when I when I asked um, or if you want to volunteer. I can go. All right, wonderful. So Kim, what is um, the thought that you are that you're holding that's holding you hostage? Um, sometimes I worry that I have a family member that doesn't like me. Okay. So let's call that family member Jenny. Okay. I hope that's not her real name. I'm just making that up. <laughs> so Jenny does not like me. So right. You put that in. So is that true? I don't know. So then you would say, I mean, it's either yes or no. So do you have absolute, do you absolutely know that that is true? No. No. Wonderful. So how do you react when that thought, when you have the thought that Jenny doesn't like you, what kind of feelings do you have? What kind of emotions arise? arise? Um, I feel sad. I feel not included. Feel a little abandoned. Um, feel insecure. Feel a lot of anxiety. Sure. And how, um, how do you treat yourself when you believe that thought? So when those thoughts are happening? Um, sometimes I can isolate, sometimes I can reach out to other people to where I don't feel alone. Um, those seem to be the two coping methods. So who would you be without the thought that Jenny doesn't like you? I would be much more peaceful, more serene. Sure. Probably friendlier, probably happier. Okay. So then what I want you to do is I want you to turn that thought around. Okay. So Jenny loves me. Jenny loves me. Yeah. <laughs> so you have no, then you can go back to the beginning and you can say, is that true or not true? And you don't have any proof that it's not. Right. Right. So that kind of frees your mind from holding that you know, holding that thought in your head. And I imagine it would change the way you react when you interact with Jenny. No, you know, having a different thought in your mind. So one thing that we can do a little further is you can, um, this is actually really fun. If you have somebody who has just constantly aggravated the bejesus out of you, it's fun to do this judge your neighbor worksheet. So um, in this situation, you talk, you, you know, think about somebody or a situation that angers, confuses, hurts, saddens, or disappoints you. So I am angry with Jenny because she told so-and-so that I did such and such. In this situation, how do you want him or her to change? So we're going to actually write it out. Now, um, one of the things that I started doing in the past year that has been really freeing for me is writing. I didn't think that I would, um, that journaling was something that I would ever enjoy doing, but there's something about giving power to the words that are in my head by writing them down. That is why I love this worksheet so much because I can actually express and say on paper exactly what I'm feeling and I can shred it if I want, but I've acknowledged, I've written something. So I've acknowledged it, that it, that these thoughts are hold, that I'm holding these thoughts, or I could actually present this to the person if I wanted to if I'm looking for some closure or some way to have a conversation. So in this situation, how do you want him or her to change? What do you want them to do? I want Jenny to stop talking about me. Um, what would you, what advice would you offer him or her? Paul or Paul. So they say Paul shouldn't frighten me. I would say Jenny should not talk about me behind my back or Jenny should come to me if she has any questions or concerns or things that I've done that she doesn't like. In order for me to be happy in this situation, what do I need to um, Jenny to think, say, or feel, or do? I like Jenny to apologize. I would like Jenny to acknowledge that she talks to, about me behind my back. I would, I would like Jenny to tell other people she's sorry for talking about me behind my back. And then what do you think of him or her? Jenny is, this is the fun part, because um, you get to actually say what you're feeling. Jenny is... And you can put words to those feelings. 
What is it about this person and situation that you don't want to ever experience again? I don't ever want to be talked about behind my back again, or I don't ever want to be gossiped about. And then again, you use the work, these four questions to go back to that. So is it true? Is Jenny really talking about me behind my back? Do I know that to be true or not? Do I know, do I have actual um, proof? Can I absolutely know that's true? And then you go through the same thing. How would I react? Who would I be without that thought? And then you turn that thought around. So um, Byron Katie actually has podcasts on a regular basis and you can go to her website. It's called The Work. Um, I did include her little workbook in the, um, in the attachments. So hopefully everybody received that. Um, one of the other things that she has is this worksheet called I complain about such and such because again, this just gives voice to your feelings, which to me um, just kind of frees my mind. So I complain about grant writing because it takes forever, or I complain about grant writing because I'm not sure of what the outcome's going to be, or because we have unclear directions. I could write a hundred things, a hundred reasons why I complain about grant writing, even though it really is my favorite thing to do. But um, it, again, it just gives voice to your, to your thoughts and your feelings. So this- And I have a oh, question. Sure, sure. I'm sorry. Back on that worksheet, what if you do know it to be true? What if it's a fact? Well, even if it's a fact, then you, you can associate your, your reactions to it. So um, okay. let's, do you have an example? Like- well, like, let's say that um, you're angry because um, somebody robbed your house. Sure. And they did. Yep. They took my stuff and they're going to jail. Sure. You know, okay. So you can still work this out the same way. So how do you react when you, ha when you have feelings around that? So Jenny robbed my house. Um, how do you react when, the, when you have those feelings? And you're giving voice to your thoughts. So it gives you the ability then to reconcile those thoughts that you're associating with that. So what would you be in the situation without that thought, without the thought that I'm angry or I'm hurt because, um, you know, the thought, ouch, the turnaround actually is that they went to jail, right? That's the positive. That's the outcome of that. So my, my feelings or my thoughts around that should be freeing. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Most situations when I go to do this, I don't actually know. So it kind of is very parallel to the don't make assumptions with the four agreements. Yep. But there are those situations where it is a fact and I'm still dealing with hurt feelings from it. So. Sure. So that, you know, again, those are the times when you would, would, um, write down your thoughts, use the judge your neighbor worksheet, go through that in detail. Um, you know, what hurts you about, and how to uh, associate your feelings with that. And it, it gives voice to that. So this work has been done, you can do it with couples. So um, you can do it with, um, you can do it with uh, work situations, with money situations. Um, it's been used in corporate America. Um, you can use it with children. Uh, it's, you know, it's a very, very um, simple process. And it helps us to, um, to identify our underlying beliefs. So we need to make a decision, right, on, on, um, on how we're going to react to things that happen to us. And this just really helps us do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, I think. So there is one more little thing I'm going to show you. And this... Um, I can find it. I have too many things open. Oh, oh there it is. So sometimes it's hard for us to identify our feelings. And I really love this um, worksheet. So on this side, it has how do you react? what happens when you believe that thought. So this helps you kind of identify some of those feelings other than, you know, I'm sad or I'm mad. It, it goes into more detail. And then the second page of this is who would you be without that thought? 
open, loving, happy. So there's other words for that. So it just helps, you know, identify on a deeper level um, your thoughts around situations. All right. Does anybody have any questions um, about this, about the work or where you can get the materials? I was very did you, fortunate. Did you send us those handouts? Um, they should be in the calendar attachment, but I can re if if it if they weren't, I can resend them to everybody in email via email. It has the attachments have the little book, um, the actual little book called the work, and then all of these worksheets along with it. Okay. Well, that was quick and easy. Um, I will let you guys go. I have a little poll to launch. If you would please complete this poll for me, I would appreciate it.